Have you ever seen a group of runners running a race and finishing the race close together? Whereas in another race, some runners might finish at very different times. That's exactly what standard deviation helps us understand. It helps us to measure how spread out the data points are on the average. Look at this image here. There are two groups of dots, one in green and one in blue. Both have the same center, but they look different. The green group is more tightly packed with a standard deviation of 1.59, meaning the data points are closer to the center. The blue group is more spread out with a standard deviation of 2.79, meaning there's more variation. Now, why does this matter? Let's imagine this dot representing test score in a math class. If the green group is our class, that means that most students score close to the average, meaning most of the students perform more or less consistently. But if we're in the blue group, that means some students do really well, but others really struggle with the materials. The standard deviation therefore tells us teachers how much the students score vary, and this can help them to adjust their teaching methods. This applies other way in sports as well. Standard deviation can tell us if a basketball player scores consistently or has unpredictable performance. A basketball player with a low standard deviation might always score between 18 to 22 points, while a player with a high standard deviation might score 5 points one game and 40 the other game. This helps us the coach to see whether this player can perform well under pressure. In businesses, standard deviation is also useful. Imagine you are a factory making iPhones. If the battery life for the iPhone vary a lot, like some lasting for two hours, some lasting for 10 hours, it means that the company has a high standard deviation in quality, which is best for customers. But if all the battery lasts about eight hours, they have a much lower standard deviation, meaning there's better quality control and happy customers. Even in daily life, standard deviation help you to explain why certain weeks feel routine while others are full of surprises. If you're coming to school, you usually take 30 minutes, but sometimes take 20 minutes or even 50 minutes. That means your commute time has a high deviation. But if it's always between 28 to 32 minutes, it has a low standard deviation, making it more predictable. Standard deviation, therefore, isn't just a math concept. It's actually a tool to help us understand patterns and make better decisions. Next time you see numbers, what's also this question? Are they tightly packed like the green group or are they spread out like the blue group? Now let's look at the formula. There are two formulas. The first one, we can call it the definition formula, which gives us an intuitive understanding of how standard deviation works. You look at this symbol x with a bar on top of it. This x bar, called the mean, is basically just the average of all the value in your data set. And you can compute this x bar as the sum of all the x divided by n, which is the number of values. Now that we have this x bar, for every value, we subtract this mean from this value. This tells us how far each value is from the mean. And then after that, we do a square. This helps us to remove negative value and emphasize larger differences. We sum up all of them, and then we divide by n. And then we, since we square the differences earlier, now we take the square to get back to the original difference. Now let's look at the second formula. The second formula requires you to find the sum of square of each value first. You take every value x, square it then sum it up. After that, you divide it by n. This gives you the average of the square values. Next, we should be finding the square of the mean. Just like earlier on, you can compute the mean x bar, and then you square it. The difference between these two terms gives you the variance, and once you take the square root, 
to get the standard deviation. All right, let's walk through this together. And from this example, you will know how to find the standard deviation. First, let's find the mean. The mean is equal to the sum of all the values divided by n, which is the total number of values. So we sum up all the value of x here, 76 plus 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 85. Then we can call that there are eight values over here. So the sum of these divided by eight gives you 80.5. And then let's sum up x squared, meaning we take each of the score, we square it, and then we sum it up. So we get 76 squared equal to 5776 plus 78 squared, which gives you 6084 plus 79 squared plus 80 squared plus 81 squared, 82 squared, 83 squared, 85 squared. In the end, you will get 51900. Using this value, you can divide by n to give you. 6487.5. For the last part, we just have to find the square of the mean and then we use previously computed 6487.5 minus this value 6480.25, which is the square of the mean. We get 7.25 for this and remember to square root it to get 2.65. Now we can do this example on your own using the same stats I mentioned earlier on. Do this by yourself and verify that the answer is correct. Well, previously we already mentioned the problem with using range is that it is too limited since it only consider the max and the mean value. inter quartile range is better, but it still ignores extreme value. Standard deviation is the best here because it accounts for how the values deviate from the mean, making this the most informative manager of square. See the two examples we have earlier on the test scores. The first test score has a standard deviation of 2.6 times, which means that they are not that far off on the mean, while the second test score has a super high standard deviation of 3.31, meaning that a lot of the test scores are quite far away from the mean test score. 